If you are thinking about starting a podcast, either by yourself, uh, with a co-host, with guests, uh, maybe it's audio only or uh, with video, please keep on listening. I started podcasting in early 2019, and for the rare occasions that I had on a guest, uh, it was always in person. But uh, once the pandemic came around and everything became remote, um, using Zencaster really, really opened up my possibilities of who I could have on a guest. I wasn't limited to the people who I could get in person anymore. Um, I have recorded guests using Zencaster everywhere from uh, just a handful of miles away from where I am in the Chicago area, all the way to the other side of the world in New Zealand. Uh, so the video and the audio quality are great, especially if they have a decent camera and microphone. Um, and getting the files couldn't be easier. I really, really love that Zencaster records the audio and the video to the person's local computer uh, so the quality isn't lowered when you get things like internet hiccups. It then uploads the footage uh, to the platform during the recording, and when you hit stop, it quickly finishes the upload and then processes the files so you can directly download them right from the platform. The files are even accessible if something goes wrong. Uh, and this next part, I'm going to basically read verbatim uh, because I couldn't have said it better myself. It's super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups. Backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with a click of a button. If you have thought about podcasting before and realized that you need lots of different tools and services, those days are over. With Zencaster's all-in-one podcast platform, you can create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. So, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code WORDNERD W-O-R-D-N-E-R-D, -E all one word, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Well, hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. My name is Spencer, and it is uh, September 28th at 7.04 a.m. Recording an episode. I got a good pattern going here. Um, hey, everybody. This is the top of page 408. I have not said that sort of thing for a while. I don't know why. I just stopped doing it. Let's talk about the words, baby. The first word is emissary. E-M-I-S-S-A-R-Y, noun from 1607, one, one designated as the agent of another. You get to, you, you are the agent for somebody else. Uh, the synonym is representative. Hmm, one des, so uh, you were you the emissary for other people. You're the represent, you're representing them. Two, a secret agent. What did we have in the previous episode? Not secret, secret. It was, uh, but, 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 where was it? Where was it? Um, something, there was an agent thing. Was it emigrant, emig emigre, 
No, not that one. Eminence? Was it? Oh, boy. Why can't I find it? Oh, here we go. A confidential agent. Yes, that was the fun word. Amy Nones Grease. Amy Nones Grease. A confidential agent. What's the difference between a confidential agent and a secret agent? Are they not secret? Okay. Uh, so that was emissary. Uh, not much etymology. So I have to make a sound effect. I'm just going to go... Ooh. Next is emission. Noun from also 1607. Interesting. Uh, this is a secret emission. 1A, an act or instance of emitting. The synonym is emanation. The thing coming out of another thing is the emission. 1B, this is archaic, and the synonym is publication. So I guess uh, when they were writing magazines and newspapers and they would put them out into the world, they would emit them, and so they were emissions. But yeah, so sort of, it sounds sort of weird to use it that way these days. 1C, a pudding into circulation. So uh, put it, a pudding into circulation, you're putting, would, would this cut, cut all? Oh my god. Stumbling over the word. Slow down, boy. Uh, if you are putting a magazine or a newspaper or something like that, that into circulation, uh, I guess that would also be an emission. Um, publication seems like it could still... I don't know. What else could you put into circulation? It's an emission. 2A. Something sent forth by emitting as 2A1 electromagnetic radiation from an antenna or a celestial body they're shooting it out what what sort of bodies would these be electromagnetic radiation from an antenna or celestial body i guess maybe any anything out there uh the stars and planets and asteroids would they do they all emit uh electromagnetic radiation probably they all do but you know some more than others those are emissions. 2A2, this one is usually plural, and it is substances discharged into the air as by a smokestack or an automobile engine. And these are the things that we're trying to have less of. We, we don't like it when we have so many emissions coming out of the smokestacks or automobiles, this carbon from oil and fuel and all that stuff. We want to be no emissions. We we should be getting into more electric vehicles or other forms that don't have emissions because those are a really, really, really big reason why we have climate change as bad as we do. And I just don't know. I don't know how this is going to go. Oh, emissions. Okay, now we have 2B. This is a good word. It's the synonym effluvium. If you are emitting something maybe from your body, it would also be called an effluvium. And you got to go back a, a bunch of episodes to hear what that one is. I like that word. Emissive is an adjective. So emissive. Hmm. You're describing something as being, as, as being em emitted. Yeah. Ooh. The next word is Emiss emissivity, emissivity, one of those ways is fine. This is a noun from 1880. The relative power of a surface to emit heat by radiation. Also, the ratio of the radiant energy emitted by a surface to that emitted by a black body at the same temperature. I feel like I need to know a bit more about science to understand this uh let's see the relative power of a surface to emit heat so there's a surface that's emitting heat by radiation um would like electric stove tops would that be this i don't know if that's radiation that's more actual heat the relative power hmm okay and then also the ratio so how much of the radiant energy emitted by a surface how there's a it's a it's a you're comparing the amount of energy coming up from a surface compared to that of a black body, which is another thing. I can't remember what that is exactly. 
at the same temperature, how much uh, energy are they emitting? Maybe one has more and the other one has less. And so the ratio of that is emiss emissivity. emissivity. Mm. I don't think I'm ever going to use this word in my life. Ooh. The next word is emit. E-M-I-T. Transitive verb. Uh, yep, it's just transitive. From 1598. 1A. To throw or give off or out as light or heat. The light or the heat is what you are giving off. Uh, obviously, you can emit so many other things, but those are typically the ones. All of the, the light in this room is emitting. I got monitors. I got lights in the ceiling. There's light all over the place. And then it bounces. And then so it's emitting that way too. And there's heat. Uh, there's heat from all the lights and all the electricity in here. And my body, are, we're constantly emitting heat and, and other stuff. Okay. 1B, to send out. And the synonym is eject. We came, we came across some other word that was similar to this a while ago. I feel like, you know, I feel like there's a lot of similar words. And uh, we've sort of talked about this before, I think. Uh, but anyway, sending out, ejecting from an, a helicopter. The helicopter is emitting the pilot as the helicopter is going down. 2A, to issue with authority, especially to put into circulation... Here's another example of a thing that you are putting into circulation. It's money. So you are uh, to to put money into circulation is emitting it. The federal government is emitting the money into circulation, and they can do that. Not all the time. They do that sometimes. I don't really know the rules of like how you can't just print more money. I mean, you can, but you can't. It makes it all low, lower value and you got to take some out of circulation. You have to unemit it. I don't know the right word for that. Um, and you are issuing it with authority. So, yes, the federal government has authority to issue money, to emit money. I would not use the word emit for that. But that's just me. To be is obsolete. The synonym is publish. And of course, we saw that with uh, the word emission. The uh, archaic version was publication. Three, to give utterance or voice to, as in emitted a groan. Because <sighs> it's coming out of my mouth. The groan is coming out of my mouth. What makes me groan? Ugh. Stupid drivers. Been seeing so many stupid drivers. Um, to give utterance or voice to. Hmm. Emitter is a noun. This is from the Latin verb emittere, which means to send out. Um, from the E prefix plus mittere, which means to send. So you sending the thing. Now, to send and to send out, what's the difference there? You are, if you're sending a letter, it's going out. What's I don't really understand the specific context of wh why would you s to send to send out. I don't know. There's there's you know, little details are different. I guess. Ooh. Next is emittance. Yeah, emittance. Noun from 1940. Oh, little kittens, you lost your emittance. Number one, the energy radiated by the surface of a body per second per unit area. Okay, the emittance. So yeah, you need a standard way to measure how much stuff is coming out over a certain area. And so I guess this is it. The energy radiated by the surface of a body, let's say the sun, which is a star, which is constantly emitting so many things. Everything's coming out of the sun. Um, per second per unit area. But you have to define what's the unit area. Is it one meter squared? Is it a kilometer meter squared? Is it an inch squared? What is it? I don't know. It, it, I guess it depends on the context. Um, per one second. How much stuff come out came out of this space in one second? That's the emittance. Number two, the synonym is emissivity, which is the whole thing about the ray, the relative power of a surface to emit heat by radiation and the ratio and all that stuff. So it's all about how much stuff is coming out of a thing. Ooh. 
Next is Emmanuel. Um, okay, it's spelled capital E M M A N U E L, and it's a variation of Emmanuel with an I at the beginning instead of an E. I feel like I've seen Emmanuel spelled with an E more often than with an I, but I don't know who, it's probably a Bible person maybe, or religious in some way, and uh, so I guess maybe Emmanuel with an I is the more correct, old, proper, original way to spell, uh, and so that's why Emmanuel is a variation of Emmanuel. Ooh. Next is Emenagog. Emenagog. E M M E N A G O G U E. Emenagog. Noun from uh, circa 1732. This is an agent that promotes the menstrual discharge. Emenagog. Menstrual emenagog. That's where we're seeing some of this connection. Um, it promotes the menstrual discharge. So what would this be? Is this like a drug that you can take? Is this something in the body that naturally happens uh, that they call emenagog? Uh, that it's because it, now it's time to uh, discharge your menstrual uh, fluids and things. Uh, I guess that's what this does. So this is from the Greek word amena or amina, which means menses, uh, which is, we, we talked about this before. I don't remember what word exactly. It's from um, emenos, which means monthly, which is n plus min, which means month. And then we added on the English agog to this Greek word. The Greek word is amina, and then the English suffix is agog, but it doesn't say what that means. What, what, and there's more of the word moon, which makes sense because the months used to be based on the moon and month and moon. And, you know, there's a etymological connection there. Um, and then the, the menses, the, the menstrual cycle is very close to the, the moon cycle. Um, but what is this agog? Is, is this an actual suffix that I need to look up? Well, let's see, A, eh? and it's G-O-G-U-E. Nope didn't oh it's because you can't put a, a minus on a thing in google because it says don't look for that um agog uh, well, that's just the word a combining form with the with the meaning leader or bringer well and that makes sense uh because it is bringing on the menstrual discharge it's bringing on that part of that cycle so yeah that makes sense um I think, yeah, I think that's kind of what it is. Producer, secretor, promoter of excretion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, okay. But what is this thing, a menagog? Maybe I'll put a link in the show notes for it. Hmm. Ooh. Next is emmentotter? No, emmentaller. <laughs> I thought it was emmentator for a second. Emmentaller, capital E-M-M-E-N-T-A-L-E-R, or you can spell it with a T-H, um, or it can be Emmental. Yeah, Emmental. So we shortened it. Uh, this is a noun from 1902, and the synonym is just Swiss cheese. <laughs> um, it's because it's from, uh, this is a German word, I guess, Emmental, Switzerland. Um, Emmentaler. I don't know why the E-R got added at the end. Um, so Swiss cheese made in Switzerland in the town called Emmental. And so it seems like the more proper name then for Swiss cheese would be Emmentaler or Emmental. And uh, why, why don't we call it? I guess us here in America, we're like, we can't say Emmental. We need to call it what it is and where it's from. Cheese from Switzerland. It is Swiss cheese can't take that name away from me uh okay Ooh. next is emmer e-m-m-e-r noun from circa 1900 oh it's a longish definition this is an ancient tetraploid wheat that has spikelets with two hard red kernels which remain in the glooms after threshing 
and that has been cultivated especially in Southwest Asia, Northeast Africa, and Europe. Yes, the species name is Triticum dicocum, or something close to that. Um, it's from Old High German Amari, but it doesn't say what that means, so I don't know. I can't give you any more information, but it is an ancient wheat. It's a wheat, and uh, it's called emmer, and I don't know my wheats whatsoever. I don't know if this is still being used or, you know, because it's ancient, do we just not have it anymore? Does it grow? What's going on? Uh, that's emmer. Whoop. Next is emmet. E-M-M-E-T, noun from before the 12th century. This one is chiefly British. And the synonym is ant, A-N-T, like the little insect ant. Emmet, hmm, um, chiefly dialect. So who calls, who, ca did I say chiefly dialect or chiefly British? I think I saw chiefly, and I thought, I just assumed it would say British. No, it's chiefly dialect. So where, okay, let's look this up. We got, we're going to single hand it. Where do people call ants, not antas, emmets, E-M-M-E-T. I have never heard of this word used uh, to, to describe ants. Well, some parts of the UK and Ireland refer to ants as an emmet, I guess. Huh, interesting. There's a phrase, not one perished, not even an emmet. Look at all, look at the little emmets crawling around. I've never heard of Cornish. It's Cornish, I guess. Interesting. Okay, so it is chiefly British, actually, even though it says chiefly dialect. Um, it's a dialect in the British areas. Uh, yes, this is uh, from Old English, emmet, which means ant, and there's more at the word ant. Great. Ooh. Next is Emmy, capital E M M Y. The, the Emmys are in this book. Uh, this is a noun from 1949. A statuette awarded annually by a professional organization for notable achievement in television. It's interesting that it says by a professional organization. It wouldn't why wouldn't you mention the professional organization? Who who gives out the Emmys? I should know this. It's not the, um, I think the Golden Globes are the, no, wait, I'm mixing them up. Who gives out the Emmys? I feel like, isn't it like the, the National Television, the National, yes, the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. Uh, okay, so they are the professional organization. Why it didn't say that here, I don't know. Can you not, does it change? Has it ever changed? Through the throughout the years since 1949, hmm, I don't know. Uh, this is from let's we, I guess that we have to b believe that this is true because the dictionary tells us it's an alternative of Emmy, I M M Y, which is a nickname for image orthicon, which is a camera tube used in television. Wow, that's a stretch. Image orthicon. Is a very specific thing, a camera tube used in television. Well, we don't really use tubes in television anymore in TVs. Uh, we're, we're way past that technologically. So then that became Emmy, and then it became Emmy. I don't know. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. Maybe someday I'll have an Emmy. Ooh. We are now in the E-O, no, E-M-O section. We are starting with Emo. Noun from 1993. This is 1993. A style of rock music influenced by punk rock and featuring introspective and emotionally fraught lyrics. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I enjoy some emo music, but I never really followed it close enough to know, like, what are, ba what are emo bands? I don't know. Um, but, you know, we all... We all are aware of this. And it's become such a big topic. Oh, you're so emo. It's not just music now. It's it's uh, people are described as emo. Uh, yes, it's short for emotional. Are you feeling very emotional? You can be emo because we can't say the whole word. 
Ooh. Next is Emodin. E-M-O-D-I-N. Noun from 1858. An orange crystalline phenolic compound, C15, H10, O5, that is obtained from plants as rhubarb and cascara buckthorn and is used as a laxative. Oh, if you need to uh, emit some things from your bottom, then you might want some emidin. It's orange. It's uh, You get it from plants. Okay, so this is from uh, its new Latin name, Rum emodi, and that is a species of rhubarb. So that's that's a very clever name. It's just the kind of rhubarb, and like, well, we we got this thing from this rhubarb, so let's name it after the rhubarb. Whoop. Next is emollient. Yep, that's the way to say it. E M O L L I E N T. Emollient. This is actually our last word. Uh, we have two forms. This is the first form. Adjective from 1626. One, making soft or supple. Also, soothing, especially to the skin or mucous membrane, as in an emollient hand lotion. You definitely want your hand lotion to be emollient. You want your hands to be soft and supple, don't you? Doesn't everybody want soft and supple hands? Hmm. Uh, Number two, making less intense or harsh. The synonym is mollifying, M-O-L-L-I-F-Y-I-N-G, as in the example, soothe us in our agonies with emollient words. That is a quote from H.L. Mencken, making less intense or harsh. Um, Your emollient words are making our agony less intense. We We can deal with life a bit better. Because you have given us some emollient words. Thank you for your emollient words. Uh, this word is from the Latin verb em- emolire, which means to soften, pl- which is from e plus mollis, which means soft. And there's more at the word mollify. So, yep, it's all about just being soft. I want, I want soft fingers and arms. I do need to be better about putting lotion on. Um, I, I put lotion on after I wash my hands sometimes when I'm feeling particularly dry, uh, but I, I need to do better with, you know, the knees, they get dry, and the, the, the shins, they get dry, so yeah. I gotta be better with these emollient things. Ooh, that's my emollient sound effect. It's so smooth and supple. The second form of emollient is a noun from 1656. Something that softens or soothes. Give me that emollient lotion. I don't know. Emollient. Okay. Is that going to be the word of the episode? I don't know. Let's find out. We had today emissary, emission, emissivity, emit, emittance, Emmanuel, emmenagogue, emmentaler. Is that how you say that word? Emmentaler. Uh, Emmer, Emmet, Emmy, Emo, Emodin, Emollient, and Emollient. Well, part of me wants to pick Emmy as the word of the episode because it would be great to have one of those someday just because I want to collect all of the awards. All of the awards, you can give them to me. Um, But I actually do think I'm going to pick Emollient as the word of the episode. It's a word I had never heard before. It means smooth and supple and soft and uh it's just not something that we uh we just don't use this word anymore and i think like many other words we need to bring them back and i will promptly forget this later but you know for now i am remembering to use the word emollient I want some emollient lotion so I can make my hands emollient. That's it. That's the song. But first, before we end, we must, we must talk about another movie I watched. I have a whole, whole bunch. Well, it's, the, the, the list is shrinking. Okay, where did we leave off? Um, 
Shazam 2. So that's not what it's called. It's called Shazam Fury of the Gods. Um, th- it's, it's a very fun movie. I enjoyed, uh, I, jo- I enjoyed a lot of aspects of it. But it's also very silly and makes no sense. But it's a superhero movie. So, like, you can't fault it for that. It's like we watched a horror movie last night. And I was like, so many things just don't make sense. But it's a horror movie. You need, you don't, you don't, I had, it's a whole thing. I'll talk about it later. But Shazam, it's just fun. There's just a whole bunch of people who have the superpowers and they're kids. And so it's fun to watch adults act like kids and they get to do superhero stuff. And it's just, it's just great fun. And that's what it is. You can't expect a lot that you can't expect anything particularly highbrow from uh, a, a superhero movie usually some of them are pretty good but yeah it's just good good fun and you should watch it if you just want some good fun um i will say this felt like the longest movie ever because it took me i don't know four or five tries at least not tries i would watch a bit and then get distracted and then i'd watch a bit another day and get distracted and it's like a couple weeks go by i'm like oh yeah i never finished that movie <laughs> i should probably finish it uh yeah That's Shazam, Fury of the Gods. This is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for listening and watching. And until next time, don't don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. You gotta say those things. You just gotta. I can't help it. This has been Spencer, dispensing information. Goodbye. Goodbye.